Okay, cool. Okay, so I got a bunch of like purple pictures and put pre-act thing, things on it because that makes perfect sense. So uh, that story is actually true, and I think my dad is a real winner here because I'd be working at McDonald's if it wasn't for him. So sh shout out to my dad. He did a very good job. So my talk is about we need to talk about pre-act. So as an idea, how many of you have heard of pre-act? Okay, that's like about like 80%. That's cool. How many of you have used pre-act? Exactly. My point exactly, I am in the right audience. Okay, cool. So first of all, like he said, my name is Sarah. I work at YLD, uh, which is a consultancy in London and uh, Portugal. I work for the Portugal branch, and I make useless stuff on the internet. That is pretty much it. It gets me to conferences, so it's not that useless after all. Proved my math teacher in high school wrong. And uh, my, uh, my handle on Twitter is NikkiDFTW because the first one was taken by uh, the TV show fans. So, yeah, that happened. I am from Portugal, so all you Germans remember us, right? Yeah, we won the Euro last year. That was a thing. Yeah, we don't know how the fuck that happened. <laughs> that is still a mystery to us. But, yeah, I can, I, can, I can say this for about, like, more six months. And I still want to tell this joke in France, but I think I'll get kicked out of the conference. So... Preact, um, and I know what your first question about this is, and yes, I brought stickers. I brought, I brought a ton of stickers. Just, I know, right? This guy gets it. <laughs> and uh, you can find me after the talk, and uh, I'll give it to you about like 50. Please don't come all at the same time. That happened last time, and I got kind of scared. Okay, so this is what we're going to talk about. By we, I mean me, I'm sorry. Uh, what is Preact? We're going to get an overview, because I think most of you already know what it is. So we're just going to get an overview for those who may have never heard of it. Who made Preact, why you should use it, and then we're going to go over the CLI because we all love automated things. Let's be honest. So what is Preact? So like a website says, so uh, Preact is a first uh, fast uh, three kilobyte alternative to React. So before y'all get all in this like, oh yeah, but React 16 is like two kilobytes. Yeah, but like the React DOM is like 22 and you need the React DOM. Preact is Preact and Preact on. It's all the same like package. Uh, so it has the same syntax as React. Basically, it renders components the same way Re uh, React does. Um, if you build an app in React, it will work in Preact. So if you just switch all the imports and stuff, it will work on Preact. The idea uh, uh, behind this was that the, um, the, the man who created Preact wanted to understand how React worked. And you wanted to build like a slimmer version of it because React used to be like this huge pile of stuff. Now it's super small, but it used to be like this huge pile of stuff. So he tried to understand how it worked and eventually got like a slimmer version of React. It's not supposed to be like the new React. I don't, that, that was not the idea. It's just supposed to be a plug and play thing that you can just work with without the overhead, like he said. So, and you're going to say like, yeah, okay, but React is used by small companies like Facebook. So it's production ready, right? Well, yes. And you were wondering, is, is Preact production ready? Well, it's used by Uber, so I'd say yes. So we, uh, each company is like Uber, uh, Financial Times, Lyft, Algolia, Smashing Magazine, uh, Pepsi, and the Style Components website use it in production. <laughs> so yes, I'd say, I'd say you're pretty safe. OK, so who made Preact? This is just so when I say his name, you're not like, who the fuck's that? I'm just gonna tell you who it is. So, uh, Jason Miller made Preact. He's this awesome guy from Canada. I have never met him, but since he's from Canada, I'm gonna assume like he's super nice and lovable. Because aren't all Canadians, right? Isn't, isn't that the stereotype? So, is like GitHub and the develop it, so find him, he's an amazing guy from Twitter and GitHub. And just talk to him, he's super friendly and is amazing. He's super smart, super friendly. Okay, so now let's get into the nitty gritty of why you should use Preact. Why you should consider using Preact. I don't want to be a dick about this. So the community. So there's this amazing community behind Preact. I know you're all going to say, like, there's an amazing community behind React. So what I mean by this is there are, like, a lot of people on things like Slack. The Preact Slack has, like, 700 people there, which are just there to help you. There's a lot of community behind the GitHub projects themselves. There's a lot of people there who are just basically there to help you understand. And I have asked very noob questions, guys. I have asked very, very noob questions, and I had answers. 
The community is really great. I am friends with some of them. I started to help out with the Preact CLI. I'm not saying I never had experience in actual, like the, um, the React GitHub page, but I'm sure this one, I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm saying this one is just equally as good. They are super supportive of your problems. Everyone will be super nice to you because the owner is Canadian, so you're gonna be fine. <laughs> Actually, the reason I got into uh, this is the chat. You can join it. It's muted, so you know there's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> in, my, in, in, the, in the general chat. Actually, the reason I got into Preact is a pretty funny story. Yes, another one. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to listen to all this shit. So um, about like a year, year and a half ago, I was working on this project that was just a huge pile of Angular 1 code. Yeah, that started off nicely. And, um, and basically, we had like all the payment methods, and then that was a directive that we had to inject in the Angular 1 app. And then all of us, like pretty smart for front-end developers, are like, yeah, let's make this payment thing in React. And it was dope. Like, it worked at the first time. It was like super dope. It was pretty. It was amazing. And then we thought, okay, so we need to integrate this into the Angular app. We thought that was going to be like about one hour. Three days later, we were all crying in our beds alone. And um, I asked on Twitter, and I was like, please, can somebody help me do this? Because I really can't. And I really want to become an Uber driver, but I also can't because my car is shit. So I have no other option. And m my math teacher in high school is going to be right, and I'm going to be working at McDonald's. Please help me. And, uh, but it's not about my life. So, and the guy that actually reached out to me was Jason. And he told me how he did it at his company, and it worked on like the third time, which was, this was like the 300th time, so three times is good. And we made it to work, and it's still like that. Is it good? No. But it does work, so it's something. I then left the company. <laughs> So as you can see, this is the Preact um, Slack page. You can join in. Uh, it's on the web page. It's on, a, on the web page on the website. Uh, this is like it has like 109 contributors and 109 people who are really passionate about this and will really help you. Uh, all of the things that I will show you next are also maintained by the community that maintains Preact, which is you may think it's a good thing or a bad thing, but. So the Preact router is also maintained by the, the community and Jason it's himself. There's also the Preact CLI, which is dope. Preact Compact. Preact Compact is a compatibility layer for React. We'll get into this. And that is it. Okay, there's a lot more stuff to help you with tests and a lot more stuff in his GitHub. But these are the main things. And all of this is maintained by all the people who maintain Preact, which is I think is a really good thing. Okay, second reason why you should use this. Preact is pretty performant. Like, it's three kilobytes big. It can almost fit into a tweet right now. And it was made with performance in mind. And I know you're thinking, like, yeah, that's cool, but you're talking about Preact. You're going to prove this. Yes. Because first of all, some kilobytes, so imagine that you have 20 kilobytes of an image. And you have a, a file that has 20 kilobytes of JavaScript. It's not the same thing. Because an image just downloads and shows up in your page, which is awesome. But the browser has to download the, the JavaScript, but it also has to parse it, which is very, very problematic in very old phones. I had a BQ. I know what I'm talking about. It was so slow. Um, so it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And just being smaller, you're probably just, OK, I'm going to shave like 30 kilobytes. But you're actually going to shave a lot more in terms of the parsing time for older browsers and for older devices. It doesn't even have to be an older browser. If someone has like a BQ, they're popular, guys. I didn't know that either. I just bought mine. Uh, OK, so benchmarks. I have numbers. Yay. So this is just a GIF, which you can't see very properly because I, OK. So this is on Firefox. I've been trying to use Firefox lately. Um, so the smallest is the best, by the way. So Preact renders in about 163 milliseconds. This is the things that it does. So basically, it has 100 items. It completes all the items and deletes all the items. This is the to-do MVC uh, for React. And I, post, I, I put React 15, 16, view. And I think it's also important to put vanilla JavaScript. Why did you put view? Because I love view. It's fine. I'm trying to sell it into this as well. So. Preact did uh, in about like 163. There's a small difference between React 16 and React 15, but it's not very visible in Firefox. 
but I think I solved another of discussions that have been going around lately. So Chrome is faster, by the way, sorry. <laughs> So Preact runs in about 58 milliseconds, while React takes about 500 milliseconds. And I do have a very high-end laptop. If I try this on my old phone, which I do not want to, for God's sake, I would probably get a way higher score, and I would probably get a way higher discrepancy. Because, like I said, the browser in that phone, which was still Chrome, but it had some somewhat bad hardware. It's not the phone's fault. It was a really cheap phone, by the way. Do not shit on BQ. I'm not shitting on BQ. My phone was like 100, 100 euros, so it's fine. Um, you would see a lot a bigger difference in this because the browser would just take a long time to process it. So these are other benchmarks. Can I zoom? No, I cannot. Okay, so I can really make this a lot. I can now really make this a lot bigger. But as you can see, like it renders a table with 100 elements, and there's a slight difference between. Preact and React, which one is 37, 37 milliseconds, the other is 39. So this is also with React 16. So as you can see, React is still slightly faster in most things and a lot faster in other things than React. But you're thinking, yeah, but I'm not going to change my whole project, Tara. I'm fine with that. It's fine. I got you, fam. So pre uh, Preact is has a really great React compatibility, which this means is that you can take advantage of the component, uh, of, of, of all the components that the community has built for React, because the community of React is amazing. We love building stuff because it's fun now. So um, you can use any React component and just pump it into Preact because it works. All you need is Preact Compact, which is about three kilobytes as well. Chill, it's fine. So how do you do this? So first of all, you add Preact Compact. NPM install it, yarn add it, whatever, uh, what you, whatever you prefer. And then this is assuming that you're using Webpack. So this also works with Browserify, but I didn't want to put an example because if somebody asked me afterwards, I would not know how to answer because I've never used Browserify and I didn't want to look stupid. So all you do is resolve. So basically what you're telling Webpack to do is if you're looking for React, screw that, go to Preact Compact. If, if something asks for React DOM, don't do that and go to Preact Compact instead. And this will work magically. Also, there's this Create React class that you can also alias it. Uh, alias? Aliases? I don't know. This is not my native language. It's fine. So you can also alias, but I would say not do this at first and then see if something breaks. Because if one plugin breaks, that plugin probably needs to be updated. And if there's no update, it's probably not being maintained because Create React class has been long dead, long live components. And um, long live, yeah. And basically, try and see if nothing breaks. If nothing breaks, awesome. If something breaks, try to resolve it without adding this, because this is also a good thing to be like, OK, this plugin hasn't been updated in forever. So what's included in Preact? This is just going to be a super fast thing, because you know we got all the S6 class components, all the life cycles, except component did catch. Component did catch is in a PR state. High order component, all the composers you could ever need and want in life. Functional components, ops. You also have context. Refs, we all use it. Don't lie to me. Everyone's like, yeah, I don't need refs. Yes, you do. Don't lie to me, girl. <laughs> Virtual DOM diffing is pretty sweet. This is an obvious one, but I wanted to go over so that you're like, oh, OK, it has this. OK, I'm fine then. OK, so what's added in Preact? Besides, you know, awesomeness. So props and state in render. OK, so this top props and this top state are passed to the render function for you. This is super sweet. This is like one of the little things that is amazing. It's the little things in life. I don't know if you ever guys ever, ever watched Zombieland, but it's the little things. Good movie. Thank you to everyone who laughed. <laughs> Thank you. So <clears throat> this is a standard React component. So imagine there's a prop somewhere in the world. So class home extends component, and then you create your constructor. You super that guy, and you say this dot state. And you said loading to true. Then you use your render function. And this is the thing that we usually do. Does it have a pointer? Oh my god, it does. Uh, so you basically, so you, that you don't write here like this dot props dot name, this dot props, this dot state dot loading. You basically come here and deconstruct the props and deconstruct the state and do this like awkward two line thing that needs to be in every render function that you have. And it usually spans about like four lines. But so. 
this is what you usually do unless you want to just put this top at state if it's a really small component, which makes you always have to return the actual element. You can't use an arrow function without an implicit return. This is preact. So first of all, you don't have the you don't need the constructor the constructor if you're just setting simple state. So you just come here and be like, I'm sorry, people on the other side. So you just come here to the state and say, okay, so this is the new state, guys. Loading is true. Okay, cool, got it. So in, in the bottom, in, in the render, you get three things in the render. You get the props, you get the state, and then you get the context. I'm not using the context in this case, but if you are, you can also pass it down. So you get the props, and you can deconstruct these props. So I get the name from the props, and I get the loading from the state. And as you can see, I don't need no implicit return no more. I can just literally return an arrow function that just says a div, and if it's loading, okay, awesome, thumbs up, show the loading. If it's not, show the name. Okay, you're like, this is not the greatest thing in the world. I get it, it's fine, but it's pretty sweet. Like, it's, it's a simple thing that I got really happy about, and then when I go back to React, I'm like, come on, this is so ugly. Okay, so DOM updates are batched using set timeout. You can also use request animation frame. This is one where it's like, this is not the best thing in the world. I'm not sure if it's, if it's a good thing, but it is good for some cases. So uh, the, actual, the actual preferred method of setting classes in Preact is class, just literally class, which you're like, yeah, okay, you can use that with React too. Yeah, true, but you get a warning. So you can use class name and class. It, this is not like the greatest thing in the world, but it, it is somehow good if you just want to copy and paste code off the internet, which we all do. Again, do not lie to me. Component and recycle pooling. This is why it's so fast at rendering, basically. Okay, now let's go over. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. Let's go over what's missing in Preact. This way I did like a Mordor kind of thing. Okay, so children. <laughs> It's not necessary in Preact because props.children is always an array, so then there's not this weird children API that React has. Dangerously set inner, set inner HTML. I'm like, is this, this is missing. We're like, do we really want this? I've had so many problems with this. Mainly, uh, we were using dangerously set inner HTML for CMS stuff that was used by the marketing department that did not understand HTML, so it just broke the entire website. That was cool. So there's a thing called Preact Markup that fills this gap, and it also does this really cool thing where it like checks your HTML, and if it's broken, it won't show it, and you can show a default one. So basically, okay, this doesn't work. Okay, show this. That is the default one. Put it in cache. We had a JSON file. That would just be like the default ones. Synthetic events. So the, the browser support that Preact has, and now we're getting to like, yeah, yeah, he left this for the end. Sorry. So the browser support target does not require this. So just uses the native ad event listener, and it's fine. What is the browser support, though, guy who fam? So Preact supports modern browsers. <laughs> so Chrome is supported of Firefox, Safari, and Edge, and IE 9 Plus. If you want to support anything like below that, you can check the Preact website, and you can just install some shims, and it does work. But if you just want to target everything from IE 9 Plus, and you're going to be fine. If you want to target like IE8, I am so sorry, and there's nothing to do with Preact. I'm just so sorry. So <laughs> this is like, so I'm going to show you some things about the demo. I'm going to show some things about the demo. I'm going to show you some things about the Preact CLI that I think are pretty sweet. So as you can see, I wrote Preact wrong over here. So um, to install the Preact CLI, you basically just npm install globally Preact, and it gives you um, the NPM install globally Preact CLI, and it gives you one, one um, global thing, which is Preact, which does a whole bunch of stuff, but the one we're going to focus on is Create. So you'd say Preact Create, and this will create a new project for you. The third argument that you, that I, that you see here that is default, this is a template that you're going to use. B uh, by now, there are three templates that are official. You can create your own. It's fine. And this will get it from GitHub, so it's fine. So default is basically just like three pages. It has a router, all of that stuff. You also have simple, which is just one page. Basically just say, hello world, what is up? And you have material UI. Material UI is basically the default uh, with material UI. Then you pass it a name. In this case, I called it React Berlin. And then you pass it all the flags you want. I just pass it yarn because the, the only difference is that it installs it with yarn, basically. That's all I did. So the next thing you got to do is cd into React a Berlin. So, okay, I can still type. That's good. 
and to start the development light reload circle, well, you got it, yarn start. Okay, so this checks if it's in production. If it is, it will run npm run serve. If it isn't, it will run npm run dev. Yeah, it also does this thing that the other one does. So now I am gonna go, I'm gonna get this, and I'm gonna go here. Oh crap, don't do this to me, Chrome. Okay, new tab, it's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Fuck. This always happens. So the thing is that I'm using Hyper, and Hyper, if you click on it, just opens it in Hyper. Not what I want. So I have to copy it. So this is the default one. Yeah, that's the most Electron thing I've seen in a while, by the way. <laughs> it's like, you click a link, what is it happening? It opens it in and up. Well, I guess it's an Electron app. So you have this home page, which just basically has this cute header to show you how you can create navigation with Preact. It has OK, so you have the home component, you have this profile component, and this one is basically hard-coded, and then you have this one, which is John, but I can change this to whatever I want. I can change this to Sarah, and this will change the component. So this is basically just to teach you the basics of how to work with Preact. So let's go to, yes, let's go here, and I'm going to open up Index. Index just imports the style and imports app, from components.app and just exports it. So now let's go to app so that I can show you this real fast. So as you can see, um, all this does is basically just return a div that equals app. Then you have your other that is in the components as well. So it has an index.js and a style.css. You can also use sass and less. You just need to install the sass loader or the less loader and it works out of the box, which is pretty sweet as well, uh, or your style components. Um, and the router uh, is, um, what is your typical router using with React? Is it React router? Can somebody just, okay. I'm, I looked at like four people and they all said yes. I'm going to assume it's everyone. So this uh, router works slightly different from the React router. So the React router, you give it like um, a route. You give it the route and then you give it the, um, the component. In this case, it's the opposite. So basically, you give it the component and then you tell where that component is going to be where that component is going to render, which is like slightly like, and if it's for the first time you look at this, you're like, what? But it kind of makes sense. So in this case, you have the home component, and the home component is going to render at this path. Oh, crap. Wait. There we go. It's going to render at this path. You have the profile component, which I will show you in a bit, and it renders at this path. And this is the prop that it gets. And in this case, it's set as me. And in this case, it's a user prop that you'll just pass it down to your component. And so it's completely like, um, I don't know, remembering the word, but you can type it whatever you want. You know, you know the word. This is not my native language. I'm sorry. So this is, in the, this is the profile. And as you can see, like I said, so the user comes from the URL, and there is no like root match, that params, that something, because the Preact router is pretty much embedded in Preact. It's from the same people, so all cool, all good. And you get this directly in the props. So you get the user directly in the props, and you just output the user. And as you can see, the state, I, did not, I, did, I was not kidding with you guys. The state is just like this. Component in mount, component will unmount, update time. This is all that you, that you need to do. And uh, to create routes, to create, um, oh my god, what did I do? OK, it's fun. So OK, this is just, that's my ESLint telling me. Component should be written as a pure function. So, you just import the link from Preact Router's match. And what you do is just link, and you give it an active class name. And um, basically, you pass it the class name that you want to, it to be when it's active, and you give it an href. And it automatically does all the magic for you. It goes back and forth in the browser, everything that you could ever want and need in life. And uh, that is pretty much what I had to show you. I, I have two more minutes. So this is pretty much what I, I wanted to show you about Preact. Oh my god, the, the, this thing is open. Okay, Sorry about that. <laughs> Copying the emoji flag for Germany. So thank you. <laughs> thank you.